back again. Shay, he's back. <laughs> Tell a friend. Uh. Guess who's back? 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 Ever right. Oh, hello, everybody. My name is Shay Too Sweet. You can call me Shay for sure. And then today, we got the eyebrows already laid. All right. And we are all, we're going to be doing Afro Samurai. Has Black Air Force energy today. Amen. Hallelujah. I'll be your resident black friend talking through the whole entire thing. Hey, look, look. Links for the original creator will be down below. So let's go ahead and jump into it. Look, I already know people are going to be like, well, Shay, you actually have an afro. Why didn't you bring it out today? All right. So remember, if it sucks, you ask for it. Look, this is as much as y'all going to get. Hell, half of y'all thought I was bald in the first place. So let's pretend like this is my afro and we're going to jump into it. For Gretz. Well, mostly revenge, but I regret a lot of sh like Osuru. I'm mad as hell. She died and all that. And I know you probably like, oh, you regret her dying because you fuck with her. But no, nah, she was bad as hell. I ain't gonna lie. This my story, though. The story of chasing the dumbass headband. Like, what am I, LeBron playing for the heat? I'm trying to be number one. That's crazy. Bitch ass nigga looking like Freddy Krueger shot my dad down with that y'all meaner. Why the fuck did he have a gun? This is a samurai anime. <laughs> oh my fault, I'm breaking the fourth wall. Man, shit. My story kind of crazy, but it's mine though. Yo, now I ain't gonna lie. When I first watched Afro Samurai some years back, I was mad as hell that people didn't put me onto this earlier. Cause you telling me there's an anime that's voiced by Samuel Jackson and y'all niggas ain't tell me about it? Bro, there ain't no goddamn way. Y'all niggas had the leader of S.H.I.E.L.D. voicing a nigga with a sword and you ain't tell me? <laughs> Bro, the intro was kind of crazy though. Let's get straight into it. So like our homie Afro told you, it was this burnt up Freddy Krueger looking ass nigga with the Glocks on him. I'm not gonna lie, bro, look like a goddamn cowboy with third degree burns. All right, tomahawk, ribeye, baby. No, I didn't drop it in dirt. Grow up, that smoke it. Woody been hanging out on the sauna too much, but bro had them goddamn 38s on him, the cowboy specials. Apparently, Afro's dad was the number one strongest in the world. And because of that, he had a number one headband on. I'm not gonna lie, I don't know why the headband depicts if you number one, two, three, or etc. but that's just how it works in this world now this burnt ass cowboy had the number two headband he came for that number one i'm not gonna lie he said i'm not settling for silver nigga. i need the gold so they about to scrap little afro there in the middle yo they going at it Mickey, 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 Mickey. but for real it's sword sound so it's like slick and slashy 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 you feel me like these niggas was going crazy but unfortunately my man afro's dad met his demise yo and got his whole head sliced the f off Bro had my man Afro Dad out here looking like the headless horseman. Bro was shooting pistols, but had a whole blade. I ain't gonna lie, that's some sneaky sh Imagine you go to square with somebody and he pulled a blade out on you. But didn't he have pistols though? Okay, I'm gonna have to watch this. Because if he had pi if if we're gonna be fighting, right? And then he fighting with pistols. Why wouldn't I think this nigga not have a knife? You just had guns a minute ago. What cheat code did you put in? Anyways, this man was foul, yo. He took the number one headband off this dude's decapitated head, put it on his head, then put the number two headband on his dad's head and carried it to this little afro. He was like, come see me, bitch ass. <laughs> he was talking heavy. Now, normally I would tell you what he regularly said because he was talking spicy, but you know I got to hit you with that hood translation. That nigga was like... Yo, gang, gang, gang. Hey, man, it's your boy Freddy coming straight out of 53rd. You feel me? I know you see these burns on me, but that ain't because, you feel me, I've been out in the sun too much. That's because my swag is too goddamn hot, nigga. You feel me? I'm out here burning up on these bitches. But anyways, I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. Listen, your dad, he was cool and all that, but he is not like that. That nigga soft as shit. That nigga is a goddamn toaster strudel on the inside, bro. Hard body, crispy on the outside, but that nigga ooey gooey in the middle. I don't know why both of those toaster strudel. I don't know why both of those toaster strudel things made me never want to eat it ever again. But it don't. I don't know if that look appetizing to y'all, but that shit look nasty as fuck to me. Was on that. That was crazy. But I ain't gonna lie, your dad. He was cool. One thing I would say though, he need to put some more hair care product on his hair, yo. Make sure your afro don't get like his when you get older. Nigga. Pick that shit out or something. That shit nappy as shit. I ain't gonna lie. Every time I go to go punch this nigga in my hand, hit his afro, it sounds like I'm rubbing against bricks. I ain't gonna hold you. Hey, little nigga, come see me when you're not a bitch. I was like, damn. So we in present time now, yo, and this nigga afro surrounded by like 20 
nigga, yo. I ain't gonna lie, bro. They like, yeah, we got you surrounded, bitch ass nigga. What's up, number two? And I was like, hold on, this nigga from Baltimore? Why he say it like that? And curses. Now this whole time he getting watched this whole season with a weird ass nigga in binoculars. I am not gonna hold you, bro. We gonna find out who these weird is a little bit later. We jump in the head. But for now, let's talk about how Afro sliced up this whole group of 20 niggas. Bro, they was deep as shit. Yo, it looked like they was about to gangbang on the set on this nigga. My man Afro was the only rolling 60, and it was like 20 pyrus around him, yo. And he sliced and diced all of these niggas. That nigga said on 5 5 crib. That nigga was not playing. I mean, he's weave, weave, slashy, slashy, slashy. Bro, he diced and sliced these niggas up like he was a cheese grater. I'm not gonna hold you. Let's fast forward though. We at this little bar, right? So Afro go in. He wants some lemonade. That's his favorite drink, by the way. Real nigga shit. Shout out to Gucci, man. You feel me? A lemon. You know what I'm saying? So we in this bar and shit, and they all in there talking about number two. They like, yeah, I heard the number two in town. I ain't gonna lie. If I see him, I'm gonna run straight up on that bitch ass nigga. He does not want no smoke with me. Nick's like, yeah, I ain't gonna lie. I'm gonna run up on that nigga too. I'm gonna hit him with the Mickey, Mickey, Mickey. That nigga's not like that. Basically, let me break y'all down to the lore. So, the number two headband is like, that's when they go after the number one and shit. It's like how LeBron be chasing Michael Jordan or Kobe did. You feel me? Like, they want to be the best. That's what real niggas do. When you that nigga debatably the second or third best all time, you like, fuck that. I'm trying to be number one. So you chase that bag. I'm not going to lie. And that's what the number two headband is. But everybody else chasing the number two because you can't fight number one until you number two. I don't know why it worked like that, because why can't number 15 just go to number one? Like, he on that mountain. What the fuck? That shit don't even matter. Catch your Uber there. But anyways, that's, that's besides the point. My point is, basically, you got to get to the top. But you got to get, you feel me, number two about the paint first. I feel it. It's a little weird, but it makes sense. So Afro walk in, bro, because these niggas done started scrapping by this point. I ain't going to lie. They mad at each other like, yo, I'm going to fight number two. Nah, bitch ass nigga, I'm going to fight number two. Man, man, I'm going to fight number two. Like, these niggas are scrapping. Miggy, miggy, miggy. This nigga Afro walk straight in. They like, oh, shit. It's a big nigga, bro. I am not going to lie, bro. And he broke my nigga Afro lemonade. I'm like, oh, shit. But yo, this nigga Afro is different. He not just nice with the swords. He got no sword style. Just like my nigga Zoro. He backhanded the shit out this big nigga. Boom! Hit this nigga to a wall and had him by his throat. I said, bro, what does this nigga Afro be doing? 58,000 pull-ups a day? This nigga's strong as shit on the upper body. Anyway, after he punished everybody in this damn bar and paid the bartender, he put that shit on bro tab. I ain't gonna lie. That's some real nigga shit. He said, yo, yeah, that bitch ass nigga just fuck my lemonade up, put that shit on his tab. Yeah, this guy just beat the fuck up the one that's sitting in the wall. Like, I, I, I feel him though. So we leave this scene on his way to the bar, you feel me? Now, it's this one dude, bro, from the bar, he followed him. This nigga had a crossbow on him. First off, nigga, is this Skyrim? Where the fuck did you get a crossbow? What are you doing? Hey! What are you doing? Boy, bro was out here fighting with all types of weapons in this show. I ain't gonna lie, but this nigga had that Yamin on him. Bro looking like he in Turok with it. Like, you know this so... nigga was about to hunt a dinosaur. I'm not gonna lie. Nick had grenades on the arrows. Bro, this nigga came straight out of Black Ops 2 with this shit. I'm not gonna hold you. Nick, what are you playing? Gun game? I fucking hated that gun. Oh my god. That crossbow in Black Ops 2 was Black Ops. They brought it from Black Ops 2. It was put in for Black Ops 3. It was put in for Black Ops 4. It was put in for Eve. I think uh it was put in for uh fucking Modern Warfare. Uh the Modern Warfare that came out. I hated that gun and that fucking discus gun. Like, because, like, with that gun, it automatically, if you were in that room with that disc going around, whoop, 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 you automatically chop. And with that crossbow, I don't know what fucking sights they had on that bitch. But every time I picked it up, I ended up getting a kill streak with that gun. I'm being dead serious. Because all they gotta do was basically not even aim. It was just like, it was basically hip fire. Cause it was, when I say aim, like, like you have to aim like some snipers, you know, unless if you're like a quick scoping God, some snipers, you had to like line it up a little bit, wait for a second, pow. With that one, I would just pick it up, pow. I would quick scope with a crossbow and that's not how it's supposed to go. I'm like, God damn. I ain't gonna lie though. This nigga rushed straight in, sliced the arrow in half, and killed him effectively, bro. This nigga cut him straight down the middle. Bro, I am not gonna hold you, bro. This nigga. Afro was different. Imagine that nigga shooting grenade arrows at you, bro, and you just like, man, f that. Weave, weave. And you slashed the nigga to kingdom come. That nigga is up there talking to God right now. God, like, yo, why you up here? You had grenades on your arrows, nigga. What the f? I don't know, bro. That Afro was too strong. I am not gonna lie. Anyways, the whole time, the big headed ass nigga that looked like the peanuts from the Proud family with the number two on his head is watching him. 
we got this weird ass caught moment after this and my afro got hit with poison so this is mad weird so in this caught moment yo I, I, these niggas basically are like i guess obsessed with trying to get the number one spot so they've been plotting on the number two first because you got to get number two to get number one it's so i hate this shit, bro it doesn't make sense because they like are stationed in this mountain they know where the number one is go up there and fight them if y'all niggas is that nice but apparently you just got to do it like this i i don't know anyways so basically so basically according to this lore the number one can basically chill protect it technically in this mountain because the number two has to come fight him but everybody's after the number two spot <laughs> I mean, if you the number one and you know that nobody can break protocol, then, then of course, like, being number one in this anime is actually easier. Because you already know there's going to be endless niggas trying to fight number two. Like, unless if I'm missing something or he's explained it wrong, put it down below or over here. But, you know, but I'm just saying, number one seems easier because of the fact of the matter is, it seems like number one is kind of hiding around all the niggas that he know that can't fight him it's like it's like a chick I, like because how i'm looking at it is it's like a chick talking shit and she got 35 big brothers around her and they and nobody can touch her you know what i'm saying because if somebody tried to touch her somebody gonna get shot you know what i'm saying that's what it kind of sounded like to me and if it's not if it's different make sure you put over here or down below so i'll know but i mean saying like for me for me, that's what it sounds like. So after this nigga got hit with the poison, this, this Yoshi Mitsu looking ass nigga, nigga coming straight out of Soul Calibur and Tekken. This nigga rushed up to him and shot an RPG. Yo, shut up, I'm a nigga speed. I ain't gonna lie. Nigga, where you get an RPG from? These that Yoshi Mitsu is not from. <laughs> Maybe he talked to CJ. He ain't got the RPG from San Andreas because I... Got all types of weapons, bro. Ain't this like feudal Japan? Like, goddamn, this must be the future, bro. These niggas got battlefield weapons. Anyways, my nigga Ninja Ninja there too. Ninja Ninja is basically Afro's way of coping with a lot of trauma that he's been through. It's like a imaginary friend type thing. I don't know if any of y'all have ever had imaginary friends when you was growing up or whatever to cope nope. with things, or if you just needed somebody because you was lonely, but that's basically what this nigga Ninja Ninja is. Real nigga, you feel me? And they let you know because they're voiced by the same niggas, just different pitches of the voice. Shout out my nigga Samuel Jackson. But anyways, nigga Afro fell off a cliff, yo, after this RPG hit him. I'm not gonna lie, bro. And we get a whole flashback of Afro's childhood. So basically, Afro ran into some bandits, and he had a number two headband, so they started fighting this nigga. Afro was fucking these niggas up, though. I'm not gonna lie, bro. He's been a scrapper since a little nigga. Because, like, what? Why does you know how to fight this well? Or, or you look like you're goddamn three years old with a sword in your hand, cutting his faces and shit. I ain't gonna lie, they did this shit dirty though, but he gets founded by a samurai and a bunch of orphans. There's a samurai that was back then, you feel me? He had a bunch of orphans, you know? They basically were like trainees. He was training them up, getting them right for the field. I ain't gonna hold you, real nigga shit. But I'ma be honest though, I started thinking about it though. I was like, why was this nigga collecting kids though? Like, what's up with this nigga? I, 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 was it foster care or like, I'm just saying. Anyways, they trained this nigga up and Afro finds out the number two is in town. So he approaches this nigga in this little like saloon type joint. Well, I don't know if it was like a brothel. I don't know for real, but this nigga in like this little joint. He fucking this bitch. I ain't gonna lie. He going he, <laughs> he knee deep in the coochie. I ain't gonna lie. I'm at the censor that though. You feel me? I can't show y'all that. You know they be on that ass suitability shit. Like he, you feel me? But anyway, this nigga come straight in and cut this nigga throat to get info from him. Afro's about to leave, bro. And he shoots himself. He was like, if you're gonna fight the kill, finish it off. Boom! Shot himself in the head. I said, "Oh yeah, this is the y'all yeah, I mean." I'm not gonna lie, these niggas out here smoking each other. Bro committed seppuku with the strap. But this led the bandits approaching him and his people though, because I guess that was their brother or their people. They like, yo, I know you a kid, but it's up in his stuck. Like, I gotta get my get back. So this man Afro had lemonade in his mouth, bro. This nigga start mixing these niggas. Stole a knife, cut this nigga with it, spit the lemonade in this nigga eye, killed him. Had another spear his own man like he weaved the dude speared his own yo <laughs> afro he's a little nigga little nigga little nigga. bro even his friends show up and start helping bro they smoked the rest of them and he asked the last one for info but just like the last guy he ain't give him no important information bro these niggas just letting this dude go in circles and circles i'm not gonna lie 
Anyways, back in the present time, we find out that it's Osuru who found him. Now, I ain't gonna lie, Osuru is bad as hell, yo. Oh my god, why do you look like that? Oh my god, what happened to Osuru? Like, bro, I'm trying to deep dive in something. I'm just saying. Ninja Ninja in there talking about hitting her the whole time. He was like, bro, I ain't gonna lie, bro. If you don't hit her, I'm going to. Like, yeah, you tripping. <laughs> now, this whole time, we find out Shorty playing him. She's standing at this little waterfall and talking to these weird-ass caught niggas on the phone with him. I'm like, you on the phone talking to these niggas, you hoe? Talking about, yeah, the data collection is almost done. She apparently been collecting data on this nigga. This weird ass. <laughs> well, I mean, I mean, like. Anyways, she basically heals this nigga back up, been playing him the whole time, but ask him to stay and watch fireworks. You find out later there's some symbolism to this because her last wish before she died was to watch these fireworks. When she was a kid, they all were asking each other, what would their last meal be or their last day be? And she said, it'd be this. I want to watch these fireworks. They're my favorite. So she watches those fireworks. And then after that, she dies. I'm not going to lie, bro. It was just like this. She got some dick. She got her favorite fireworks. And then she got burnt alive in a building. I ain't going to lie. That's a hell of a way to go out. I'm just saying. Imagine you get some coochie and you get to watch fireworks like i'm just saying afro mad as hell though so we on his way to number one after this he like oh yeah so y'all gonna kill my shorty <laughs> i mean she was a snitch uh, oh my god thoughts and prayers to the snitching ass bitch but she was she was a bad person what the fuck what what like men stop trying to stop trying to be a captain save a hoe okay if a bitch shows you who they are, believe them, okay? D this is, okay, that's what she is. If a bitch shows you who they are, believe them, okay? Because this bitch was a bitch. And, like, okay, I I'm, I'm just going to leave it alone. But I will, I will, I can I direct you to one of my favorite, my favorite, my favorite songs? It's not even a song. It's, it's more like a poem. And it's, 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 it'll speak to your soul. I promise you. And it goes like this. A bitch is a bitch. Even if I'm poor or rich, I talk in the exact same pitch. Now the title bitch don't apply to all women, but all women got a little bitch in them. Shout out to NWA. If a bitch show you who they are, believe them. And leave him the fuck alone. Oh, Shay, that's sexist. You can't say that. Yes, the fuck I can. If a bitch shows you who they are, believe them. If a, if a fuck nigga shows you who he is, leave him. There you go. Now everybody's fucking happy. But don't be a simping ass bitch. Oh, why? Why? But them haters been plotting on Afro this whole time. They made an Afro bot. Is Dick eating all you guys do? Y'all made a whole robot. This said if you can't beat them, join them, bro. That is crazy. So there's a bunch of trained assassins in this little building where they got this Afro bot at. They want to take down number two on one also. So they like, all right, fuck it. We're going to have a battle royale between the Afro bot and these two assassins and the rest of the room. Whoever's left gets to fight number two. And I'm not going to lie. He turned these niggas into mincemeat. Bro, it's just a nigga with Afro skill, but it's a robot. He mad strong. Bro was in there going crazy. They had this nigga in there looking like Arnold Schwarzenegger. I'm not going to lie, bro. This nigga was in there like, go to the job, Bob. Like, bro, he was in there slicing these niggas up. Man, fast forward, though. We got Afro versus Afro bot, and I'm not going to lie, bro. This nigga Ninja Ninja been telling this nigga not to go the whole time. He was like, bro, please don't go fight this nigga, bro. He's different. Bro didn't listen though and started getting punished on the bridge. He was copying everything he did, but he's faster and stronger. Like, I mean, the whole time he's beating this nigga up, Afro's looking bad. You know what nigga losing bad when he get beat into finding out some new shit? Bro, beat him up into a flashback. This reminded me of every time Naruto was getting beat up and then he had to use that Jiraiya flashback to help him out. So he had his flashback and his sensei told him he had to use unpredictable moves. He unpredictable. So we started doing that. He started fighting this nigga different. Bro, he broke this robot sword and sliced this nigga straight down his head. After he smoked the Afro bot, allegedly, he went on. Now, the first dude he encounters out of the weird-ass call group was one of the peanut niggas, but he greeted him, so we spared that nigga. Then he keeps going, and we got number six. This nigga in the straw hat think he Luffy and shit. So we start fighting with his staff, and I'm not gonna lie, this nigga suck. Afro maneuvered around him, jumped on the ceiling, and struck this nigga. But bro held Afro's sword, I'm not gonna lie, and the two peanuts from the Proud family jumped straight out. I was like, oh shit, they had a plan the whole time. He had these little niggas in a book bag. 
bro had little peanut niggas in a jam sport. I'm not gonna hold you. Them niggas was jumping straight at this nigga afro, but Nick started beating their ass with a sheath. He ain't even have a sword. He was like, no, you underestimated him, number two. Nigga hit this nigga in the face with a sword, took his sword back, and killed both of these niggas. Impaled both of their big ass heads. Bro, he turned these niggas into a shish kebab. That's crazy. So we ended up going to the last room, yo, and it was a bunch of dead bodies in this bitch. And the little nigga with the binoculars was hiding in them. This nigga, bro, he stabbed this nigga, bro, and you just see blood coming down the binocular screen. That nigga had no chance at all. I ain't gonna hold you. This next part was fire, though. So you remember I said allegedly earlier about Afrobot? This nigga was not dead, yo, and this robot fight was so crazy. This nigga was shooting all types of shit, looking like Geno's from One Punch Man. Bro jumped on the robot's head, so the robot said, fuck, started flying up. They above the clouds at this point. Niggas about to go to space. Niggas started hitting him in the head. Mickey, Mickey, Mickey. So the what robot the started hell? falling down. When they get back to the ground, bro charged all the way up and shot the craziest blast ever, bro. This nigga Ninja Ninja was like, oh, I guess the robot blew his load. Nigga said, Rah. that felt good. I said, hey, yo. No. The whole time, this nigga Ninja Ninja was like, is he dead yet? Are you dead yet? <laughs> like, yo, chill. So after he finally smoked this robot, after he busted the biggest plasma nut ever, they take the elevator up. And the leader peanut was in here, tried to hit him with a sneak attack. As soon as the that? elevator opened up, this get dead as hell. I don't know why this big head ass nigga tried that, but anyways, moving on. So there's a nigga with a bear head waiting up here, yo. And we find what out that fuck? it's this nigga Kenji. I knew it was this nigga because for some reason Afro would not fight this nigga. He jumping around and shit. He dodging this nigga instead of trying to kill him. And that's when we get the flashback episode and we learn the truth that this nigga Afro's master, the nigga that was collecting orphans, that was weird by the way, I'm just saying, was the number two the whole time. Nigga told this nigga Afro, meet me under the tree after midnight. So Afro pulls up, but so do the students. And as soon as this happens, they about to scrap a band of assassins jump up and they want to jump the number two. And the master was telling them, this is what being the number two means. And he goes to fight these niggas. I'm not going to lie, bro. His whole squad was getting murdered. The master was getting fucked up by everybody. So the kids jump in. They're kids. I'm finna do shit. These niggas about 4'11. I'm not gonna lie. They getting sliced and diced crazy. This nigga Afro was just sitting there. He's barely helping. This nigga is watching it happen. Which is why this nigga Kenji was so mad about it. Yo, I'm not gonna lie, yo. I just realized this whole time I've been calling this nigga Kenji. And I know y'all niggas been mad as hell in the comments. So I'm gonna get my editor to put an asterisk up and put his real name. This nigga name is Geno. What the <laughs> f was I getting Kenji from? I just made that name up. God damn. My brain be working weird as hell. That is probably somebody from a whole nother anime. But anyways, this nigga Geno was mad as shit, And rightfully so. I'm not gonna lie. So he blamed this nigga Afro and told him he'd never forgive him. And after everybody got smoked, he fell off a cliff. But I ain't gonna lie, this nigga Geno ugly as shit though. This nigga out here looking like Darth Vader with his mask off. Nigga on there breathing heavy as shit. <laughs> ugly ass nigga. I ain't gonna lie. He finally goes to attack him. And this is when my man Ninja Ninja gets smoked. Now, I don't know if this was symbolic of Afro coming to reality and realizing who he needed to be. I think that's what it was supposed to be. But this nigga Ninja Ninja got smoked, bro. Like, that was kind of crazy. Why they do my man like this? But Afro realized, even though this nigga my friend, I gotta really scrap with him. This nigga Ninja was looking bad, though. Bro couldn't even light a cigarette, bro. But now we got this nigga Jim bro. And I am not gonna hold you. He was mixing Afro up something crazy at first. But, um... So can somebody explain that down in the comments? Because, like, if they're all kids, what the fuck did he expect him to do? That's, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just trying to, I'm like, why you mad? Because he was standing there and everybody else died? Bruh, so, like, bruh, get the fuck out of my face. Like, like. That makes no sense to me. But I think it's because Afro really didn't want to hurt him. This is when we learn how Geno got remade, bro. So they end up finding this. They put him back together. I am not going to hold you, bro. When they put this back together, he looked and woke up just like Griffith, bro. His whole body mixed, mangled, fucked up. He dragged himself to the beach. It even looked like the eclipse was happening on that bitch. But he ends up killing a whole band of the hawk. I mean, my fault. A whole bunch of assassins. That shit was crazy. But my man talking crazy to Afro gave him the resolve he needed, yo. And he smoked this nigga. Bro, cut him straight in half. Moving on, we finally get my nigga Afro versus Freddy Krueger, bro. And Freddy Krueger put us on to some new shit, bro. He basically explains all the headbands. At the number one, his real mission is to collect all the headbands so he can create peace in the world. I don't know if this is really what it's supposed to be or if this nigga delusional, but that's what he thought. 
I wanted to smoke the whole world just to make peace. Bro, they get the mix, and I'm not gonna lie. Afro was punishing this dude badly, bro. He waited all this time thinking he liked that and was getting punished. Bro cut his arms off and his head off. But bro was like, oh, that's it? And just like some Freddy Krueger ass, yeah, he regenerated. Bro grew his head back. He stabbed Afro through the head, though, but whole time it was his Afro. That Afro came back to and haunt this shit. Read, read. He slid off the shit and diced this nigga up crazy. Bro, he turned this into so many different pieces bro i thought this was trying to make stir fry with this shit. and after that he collected the number one headband but our story isn't over there and i know y'all want to hear what happens in season two because that shit was crazy but you know i need those fifteen thousand likes oh my god this is okay so that was i guess that was season i guess that was season one i would say this is a this is a sport this this has spoilers in it but literally you couldn't see shit because everything was fucking blurred out so again i i'm gonna watch it because that didn't explain shit besides samuel l jackson's in it they like um as a magical afro and um and and um samuel l jackson's in there basically everything else went right over my shoot, right over my head so i cannot wait to watch this one and it's gonna be in between me filming, editing all these other videos and everything else. But again, my name is Shay Too Sweet. You call me Shay for short, and like my grandmother always says, so long. Girls play baby elephant when she gets a character. Watch your busted down for the camera. Might go broke she never looks like an amateur. Want it longer, I'ma flex a little stamina. Oh, she like to dress up, I know.